I've handled thousands of snakes. Oh my gosh, it's much jumpier. A little bit of his venom can kill you within an hour. Right. This is a story about one of the world's biggest hidden health crises, snake bites. Good, good. And the hundreds of thousands of people who are killed or seriously injured each year. I was told my leg would have to be amputated or I would die. So this here is one of the fang marks and the other one is down here. It's about the hunt for new treatments as global supplies of anti-venom dwindle. In this year, we already have around 49 uh, snake bite victims. I've come to Kenya to explore the work being done in some of the worst affected communities. How many have been bitten by a snake before? To save lives and limbs. It's eight o'clock at night, and Kenya's new snake bite research team receive a panicked call. Are people safe or terrified? Do they want to kill the snake or...? A cobra has been spotted up a tree in a nearby village. No one has been hurt, yet. People from the village guide the vehicle through the bush. Once we have secured, I will get the snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kenyan snake bite expert Joffrey and his colleague from the UK, Nick, have been on the lookout for snakes. So can we get everyone just to go back a little bit, please? Where? The cobra has been spitting venom for more than an hour. OK, it's coming, it's coming. OK. No? Slowly and carefully, okay. they uncoil the creature. The cobra is captured. It was almost shedding the skin. The snake has been bagged up now. Uh, Joffrey is now telling the community that uh, they are safe for the moment from this snake. It's going to be taken away. You OK? Brilliant. But this was an enormous red spitting cobra, and I think this community will be very pleased that it is no longer in their backyard. These remote bushlands are home to many species of venomous snakes. In Kenya, there are more than 30 types which can kill. Communities living deep into these lands are used to living alongside them, but sometimes they clash. Often when the animals slither into villages to prey on livestock kept close to or inside people's homes. The consequences can be deadly, but many more people are left with life-changing injuries. It's been four years since a snake slithered into Marta's community. She was bitten as she worked on a farm, losing her leg and her livelihood. Now she is housebound, relying on her brother and his children to care for her. My body was completely swollen and turned black. I was told my leg would have to be amputated or I would die. I cannot work. I just sit here at home. How do you spend your days? My days. Mm. She tells me, I spend my days alone. Marta's experience is a sadly common one. We're heading to Mwingi Hospital now. It's one of the biggest hospitals in the whole of Kitui County. And there have been around 50 snake bite patients there in the last six months alone. And we haven't even entered the rainy season yet when the snakes really come out. So we're going to go there, meet some doctors, and meet some of the patients. Around half of the snake bite victims treated in this hospital this year have been children. <laughs> Three-year-old Carol is just the latest. She was bitten on her head by a red-spitting cobra just outside her home. It was around nine at night. Carol ran to the door to meet her grandmother. Then she ran straight back in and started vomiting. We didn't realize she had been bitten by a snake. In the morning, Carol's whole face was swollen. That's when we rushed her to hospital. Carol is expected to make a good recovery, but she needed several doses of very expensive antivenom treatment, which is an extremely short supply. 
Her father, a builder, doesn't know how he's going to pay. Dr. Joram Durangu has dealt with some of the very youngest snake bite victims at this hospital and says the job can take its toll. Sometimes it's quite emotionally draining, like for, for the small children. We've, we've had to do amputations of the lower limbs, sometimes the upper limb, because, because of the venom. So there are those um, bad outcomes you usually get, uh, but the good thing, there are not usually so many. We should be able to manage most of them early enough. So our biggest culprit here is the red spitting cobra. Nurse Cecilia Ngare and snake expert Nick Casewell are going to start assessing how effective the only treatment for snake bite, antivenom, actually is. So it's it's kept under lock and key here at the Mwingi Hospital's pharmacy. Yeah, so it's a very expensive drug, secondly. These drugs are in very short supply and cost between 50 to to $100 for just one dose. There are other problems with it too. You research antivenoms, you're trying to develop new ones. I mean, how effective are these two? This is the real challenge we have with antivenoms. We call antivenoms this single thing, this one medicine we use to treat snake bite, but the the reality is they're incredibly variable in terms of how well they work, how safe they are, how specific they are and how expensive they are. But of course, in terms of our research, what we're trying to do is circumvent conventional antivenoms. We're trying to make better products. We want to make them more effective against the breadth of snakes that you can find in any part of the world. So these products might work well against certain snake species, not so well against other snake species found even within, say, East Africa. This is one of Kenya's leading snake handlers. And this is the green mamba he's about to extract venom from. Good, nice. The toxins in this deadly liquid are the very same that are used to create the antidotes for some snake bites. It's such a beautiful snake, isn't it? Right. But this one can kill you quite quickly. Yeah, a little bit of this venom can kill you within an hour. Right. Snakes which are common in Kenya, like puffers, mambas, cobras. We have uh, about 126 different kinds of snakes. 33 are known to kill humans. I've handled uh, thousands of snakes in my career. It looks scary, but for me, I'm really comfortable with it. Different types of snake bites from different areas of the world need different types of antivenoms to treat them. So this particular venom mixture is uh, from vipers and puffada. Scientists here are using the venom from poisonous Kenyan snakes to try and develop new, more effective treatments for snake bite victims in sub-Saharan Africa. The antivenoms that we currently have are mostly produced from venom from Indian snakes and so they don't work as effective in our population here. And so what we're trying to address with the experiments we are running now is to get safer, uh, more affordable antivenoms produced from venom from our snakes. This is very important to me because I've experienced uh, relatives who've been bitten by snakes. Uh, some of them have died, some of them have very uh, gross scarring. Five, six, seven years ago, I decided to get into this kind of research uh, to try and change this for our people. And George is spearheading change, along with his team of scientists. They are also working at a nearby farm in their quest for new antivenoms. As well as trying to develop new treatments for this region, they are trying to come up with an antivenom that could work on many different snake bites from different parts of the world. 38.1 temperature is doing fine. Today they are looking at how cows are reacting to a weakened cocktail of snake toxins. 
These cows were injected with snake venom a few days ago. Vets here say it doesn't harm the animals, but it does trigger an immune response. Researchers then harvest the antibodies fighting against the venom from the blood in these animals, and they are used to develop new antivenoms for humans. But they're looking good, aren't they? Yeah. If their work here is a success, this will be the first antivenom of its kind, protecting against 12 different groups of snakes in both sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. It's extremely early days, but it's hoped less of the drug would be needed, so it would be more affordable too. Professor Rob Harrison helped set up the research facility here with funding from the UK government. It's been more than a decade in the making. We've got these wonderful technical platforms for antibody research and discovery. And we're using that to see if we can come up with the holy grail, which will be these human or humanized antibodies that will be capable of treating any snake in Africa or India. It will be incredibly effective in terms of dose. So, th and if you can reduce the amount of these things that you give, then you increase affordability, which is a major problem. But because it's safe, because it's affordable, we think we can deliver it to the community. The biggest problem that leads to this loss of lives and loss of limbs is because of the distance and the duration taken from when the patient was bitten to when they got to hospital. So what you are trying to do with the ambulance is kill this time taken. Cecilia and her team are piloting new snake bite ambulances which can wind through difficult to access areas and get to victims fast. So the quicker you get to hospital, the more chance you have for surviving. The team have two of these bikes in this area and are being called out on average about once a week. This is one of those calls. The race is on to get to a teenage boy bitten by a snake as he tended to his livestock. Cecilia and her team reach the remote village within an hour. Yeah, we are suspecting the father. They clean the wound. He's in a state of shock. But the team carefully lift him onto the ambulance and head to hospital. A couple of days later, Cecilia is back at Mawingi Hospital visiting the teenager. He's still actively bleeding. So Musyoki here still requires another dose of antivenom because this bleeding is a sign that the envenomation is still active in the system. Musyoki has already had six vials of antivenom at a cost of around $300 for his family. So this here is one of the fang marks, and the other one is down here. The teenager has a long recovery ahead of him, but the fact he was able to get to hospital quickly after making the call means medics have been able to save his leg, and he is expected to return to school. Another key part of Cecilia and her team's work is telling people about the risk of snake bites and teaching them how to stay safe. This community is very used to living alongside snakes. How many have been bitten by a snake before? But today is a first for them. They're learning snake bite first aid. Some volunteer to show Cecilia how they currently deal with bites. There are some people who have a specialized stone. They call it a black stone in the community. They place the black stone on top of the bite mark and they, they believe that the stone sucks out the venom from the body, which of course definitely does not. This is such crucial work, showing the community themselves what to do in the minutes after someone is bitten by a snake to give them the best chance of a good outcome before help arrives. <laughs> Communities like this one are lucky. They now have a dedicated team ready and waiting to help them. If this pilot scheme is a success here, these snake bite squads could be heading to other parts of Kenya very soon.
Snakes have been slithering through these lands for millions of years, well before humans. They are an important part of the biodiversity here. But losing lives and limbs as a result of their bites is avoidable and should be treatable. So we can think of red spitting cobra, black mamba. Experts Joffrey and Nick are out on a dry riverbed looking for more snakes. In the evening they will come out of the hole. It's a nice hiding for sand snakes and puff adders. It's painstaking work. But the team is hopeful that their project here in Kenya will lead to fewer deaths and fewer disabilities as a result of these ancient killers.